Connecticut has lost $35 million in gross earnings taxes because cable TV providers are losing customers. Yet cable companies continue to enjoy a tax exemption on their equipment that their telecom competitors don't get. At the same time, the telecoms don't pay gross earnings tax. This, this doesn't, doesn't make, make sense. sense. It's time to level the playing field. Make everyone pay their fair share. Please support sustainable funding for digital equity, community access, and the CTN network. Need more detail? Take a look. Connecticut is known for its beautiful landscapes and vibrant culture. Large or small, rural or urban, our cities and towns linked by public streets and paid for by taxpayers are used to connect us to many things, including work, home, and play. It's here that we find ourselves in a local coffee shop on a tree-lined street for our time together. Now don't stir from what I'm about to tell you, because what happens on these public streets though written down, known, and even printed, is only understood fully by a few. Let's begin a chronicle that when we arrive at the end, it is to be hoped that we know more than we do now. Our streets are used as an infrastructure on which utility poles are installed and wires attached that travel down the street and connect to customers. These wires are conduits that deliver products and services to homes and businesses, and though costly, are essential to our way of life. The wires on the pole have electrical at the top, then cable, competitive telecommunications, fiber, and telephone at the lowest point. Cable companies who use our public streets in, over, or under, and affixed to these poles selling products and services to customers must pay a pole fee. This is a transaction between them and the pole owner. Most poles are jointly owned by power and telephone companies. It only takes $1,000 and an application for cable companies to receive legal authorization called a certificate without any hearing or review. This allows them to sell to customers, including businesses like this coffee shop, households, or multi-dwelling units like condominiums. Since the beginning of cable, a certificate allows companies to build and roll out their systems to customers with the following obligations. A federally mandated 5% gross earnings tax to the Franchise Authority, which in Connecticut is the state. This money goes into a general fund and pays for things such as CTN, Connecticut's TV network, funded $3.2 million annually. Fund Public Education and Government TV, called PEG, the equivalent to CTN on a local town level and considered by Congress and the FCC an important part of our communities, with funding approximately $1 per month per customer. 0.25% gross earnings tax to a grant fund used by schools, towns, and community nonprofits for technology or capital expenses. Carry local broadcast stations like channels 3, 8, 30, and 61, CTN, and PEG TV stations. Here's the deal given to them. Receive a personal property tax exemption on any truck, wire, or piece of equipment used to provide cable service. Connecticut is one of the few, and maybe the only state left, that still offers this special exemption to cable companies. Charge customers whatever they choose with no regulation on cable rates or types of programming sold to customers. And so it's been that way for many years. But now technology has evolved with digital telephone and internet delivered products and services now sold by these former one product only cable companies. Triple plays like cable, telephone and internet delivery service are transmitted over the same cable wires to your home or business. Remember, these companies are not the internet. It's significant to note they are only a delivery service, a pipe so to speak. Customers, too, have advanced on what they buy. I mean, how long are people going to be willing to pay one price for a lump of channels when they only watch a few of them? And for most customers, the technology is somewhat immaterial. They just want to watch what they want, how they want, and on whichever device they want. Like me, this coffee shop offers Wi-Fi. 
I can use my cell phone or laptop right here to watch online the same cable TV lineup I have at home or connect with work, emails, or the internet. Now here's the deal. Customers say they cut the cord, but the cord was never really cut. As our Public Utilities Regulatory Authority pointed out in a recent study, the customer just shifted away from traditional cable. In fact, the shift is happening on the same cord, the same infrastructure, using the same street, and customers have the same access to CTN and PEG TV on smart TVs, online, or with apps like Roku, Fire, and Apple TV. And here's the problem. Cable companies don't lose a customer who switches. They keep the same customer on the same wire, on the same pole, over the same street, but now they keep all the revenue with nothing coming to the state or peg. What do I mean? Well, as traditional cable sales diminish and the fees are only on the cable service, gone is the 5% gross earnings tax. Gone is the 0.25% gross earnings tax grant bond. Gone is PEG funding. Gone is carriage of CTN or PEG on their non-cable channel lineups. Can you guess what they retain? Besides the customer, they retain all of their personal property tax exemptions. So long as they have but one cable customer, their personal property tax exemption remains on all their trucks, wires, and equipment because they are operating under a cable certificate. Let's say the coffee shop we're sitting in started selling lottery tickets. They need a lottery license. And if they started selling gas, they need a license to do so with different requirements than those to just run a coffee shop. And regardless of what they were selling, they'd still have to pay rent to the landlord. These mega communications corporations using our streets continue to rake in billions of dollars. Have you seen your bill? In 2024, they raised customer bills over $10 per month, just in add-on fees. PEG nonprofits are small business employers who've had their funds cut in half, forcing layoffs, putting a strain on local community TV resources that bring Connecticut's hyper-local content directly to where the consumer wants to watch, online. If something doesn't change this legislative session, this valuable public resource will cease to exist. And the state? The gross earnings tax revenues are rapidly diminishing due to revenue declines from traditional cable customers. For example, in fiscal year 2014-2015, the state received nearly $74 million in gross earnings tax receipts from the cable industry. By year 2021-2022, the gross earnings tax receipts had dropped to $39 million. I've enjoyed the coffee in your company at this little shop, but I'm afraid this chronicle ends on a sad note in that Connecticut is no longer receiving the full public benefits from the cable industry that were the original conditions for occupying our streets. Those public benefits must be restored and required of these companies as they continue to profit by way of our public streets. And we need your help. To pour gasoline on the fire, Connecticut made a decision in 2007, unlike most other jurisdictions. It has provided the cable companies a permanent license to occupy our streets with no accountability. It has been 17 years, I repeat, 17 years since any of these companies has had a formal public review of its performance since October 2007. And how about you? Are you unhappy with your bill? Are you unhappy with their customer service? Legislators hear constituent complaints about these companies and wonder what can be done. Just yesterday, I heard about a senior citizen, a longtime cable customer, receiving the exact same services since 2017 through today. His bill then was $174. And without any increase in services, it's now $270 in a seven-year period for the same service. Well, now you understand the problem. And there is a solution for the people of Connecticut and the companies who serve them. But you must act, you must stand before it's too late.